So that's an advanced algebra. Lesson 83, climb aboard, ladies. We're taking Saxon Airlines to Mexico. This is a lesson like a vacation at the beach. It's gonna be sunshine and it's gonna be turquoise waves lapping at the white sand and we're gonna walk on it and it's gonna be so coral and soft on our feet and we're gonna go get lemonade slushies and lie in the sun and I'm gonna swim in the pool the whole time because this lesson is a dream of easiness. We've done all this before. We have done all of this before. There is nothing new or complicated in these lessons. Let's just kick back and enjoy. Probability, as you know, is determined as the probability of, say, heads being flipped in a coin is equal to the number, remember this, before it was hashtag, it meant number, number of desired outcomes, right? Like, getting heads or rolling a three or whatever it is we want to have happen, we divide that by the number of total possible outcomes. We'll illustrate this in just a second, but this is the basic formula that we use for these probability problems. Um, and just to give you, um, if we're flipping A fair coin. What is this fair coin of which John often speaks? Back in the day, maybe even now, some casinos tried to cheat the game so that the house would win, right? To keep people from getting all the money. And so they would do things like create fake coins that were designed to either favor heads or favor tails, right? So they were not fair coins, they were trick coins that would tend to land more on one side than another. A fair coin just means a normal coin, not a trick coin. It's even Steven, which it will be. If we wanna know the probability of flipping heads, we can measure that as, let's see, when we flip a coin, there's two things that can happen, right? Heads or tails. So there's two possible outcomes, and we only want one of them, we want heads. So the probability of flipping and getting heads is one out of two, and we typically put parentheses around that, all right? So there's just a quickie refresher. Now let's try this problem. Two fair dice are rolled. Again, they're not cheating dice. What is the probability of getting A, What's the probability of rolling a seven? And B, what's the probability of rolling a number greater than eight? Okay, so there are the two questions before us. Now, here's the thing about rolling dice is there's six numbers on each dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. You may remember this in last year's lessons. One, two, three, four, five, six. What we want to do in these more complicated problems, I mean, we don't have to draw a picture of a coin to imagine it, but we want to imagine all the different outcomes of rolling two dice. So the first dice could get a one, two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. When they're singular, they're just called dies, aren't they? D-I-E. So the first die can get any of those. And then the second die can get the same range of values, right? So when we're rolling two dice, then these represent all the possible throws, right? Like if you're playing, what, Clue or Monopoly, those both use double dice. Um, backgammon's two, isn't it? Um, these are the number of moves you actually get to make, right? Three, four, and I'm adding these. It's super quick and easy, right? Because you just go up the row. So these are all the different possible outcomes when you roll two dice. And we need to have them all written out in front of us because we need to 
not just visualize them, but count them, okay? So I'm gonna make these lines a little darker so you can see. That's the number on each die. And then these are all the outcomes. There are how many? 36 outcomes, right? So let's look at A. What's the probability of rolling a seven? Well, there's 36 total possible outcomes, right? 36 different combinations, six times six. And we want a seven. So let's look at where our sevens are. Oh, look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six ways to roll a seven. So the probability of rolling a seven is six out of 36, or I'll rewrite the problem now. The probability of rolling a seven is one out of six. Beautiful, right? Now what does B wanna find out? What, how, what's the probability of rolling greater than an eight? Let me use another color so that you'll be able to tell which circles go to which part of the problem. Um, greater than an eight, so that would be nines, tens, elevens, and there's one twelve, boxcars, right? So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, out of, again, 36 in all, and we can reduce that. So the probability of rolling greater than an eight equals five out of eight. How does that sound? That sounds right. Yay. Do you remember doing these problems? I think that this example comes straight out of one of the other ones. These exact fractions are the same. I've done some of these problems so many times, you guys. I have them, <laughs> I have them memorized. I have bandwidth of my brain committed to John Saxon's example problems. That's fun, right? Okay, so that's just figuring out a straight probability of one event happening. What if you're trying to find probabilities of, like, say, three coin tosses in a row? We call that independent events. We know that if you toss a coin six times in a row and it comes up heads, that doesn't change what could happen on the seventh time because every single roll, time you roll the die, or flip the coin rather, sorry, I'm mixing my metaphors. Um, it's a 50-50 chance of head or tails. It doesn't matter if the other events have all been one or the other. Each time it's 50-50. But what if we wanna find out like three different throws in a row, the odds of getting a certain pattern? That's what these problems are about. A fair coin is tossed three times. What is the probability that it comes up heads every time. So what we wanna find is the probability of heads, heads, heads. And here's the, another way we can look at that. Here's the first event, the second event, and the third event. Each event is independent, but we wanna know what's the probability of getting heads the first time is one out of two, heads the second time is one out of two, heads the third time is one out of two. We multiply them all together, and we find that the probability of getting heads three times in a row is one out of eight. Do you feel the sun beating down on your chaise lounge? Down, I think we're in Cabo, you guys. And I can feel that breeze rolling in off that beautiful water. And it's a little bit hot, but luckily our pool guy is keeping the cool drinks coming. Um, I'm having, I think I'm having a virgin margarita right now. I don't, I mean, you guys are a little young for this, but I don't really like to drink alcohol, even if I'm on the beach. So um, I'm not gonna have any alcohol, but I do like that sweet and sour taste of a margarita. So let's have some virgin margaritas and, you know, maybe some nice, Fresh lime in there, salt around the rim. That's kind of weird, but it's good. Um, okay, a fair coin is tossed four times and it comes up heads every time. What is the probability that it will come up heads on the next toss? Okay, that's a little bit different than this. We're saying, what if it came up heads, 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 heads? What would the probability of it being heads on the fourth toss, if we imagine it as the fourth in the row. Well, every single time it's one out of two, right? 
So the probability of getting heads on the fourth toss is just the same as the probability of any toss of the coin. It is one out of two. Yay. Replacement. Replacement is another issue that comes up in probability problems. Um, and these are my favorites. Well, I mean, I love them all, but I really like these. An urn contains two black marbles and two white marbles. Okay, you guys know what an urn is? It's one of these like big vase type things, right? And our urns are notoriously full of <laughs> marbles. This is like a cross section, right? It's got a top to it. And we're looking inside of it. And we've got two black marbles. I know they look green, but pretend. And two white marbles. This is obviously an anti-gravity vase because they're just floating in there. Okay. And what does it say? A marble is drawn at random and replaced. Then a second marble is randomly drawn. A. What is the probability that both marbles are black? Okay, so in the first one, we say it's with replacement because we take out a marble, we look at it, and then we put it back in, okay? So the first time, the odds of getting a black are two out of four, right? Two black marbles, four marbles in all. The second time, it's the very same thing, right? Two black out of four all together. So that means that that would be four out of 16, which reduces down to one out of four. Okay, so the odds of getting a black and then a black are one out of four with replacement. Now, the second part of the problem says, if the first marble is not replaced, before the second marble is drawn, what is the probability that both marbles are black? Okay, so this time it's the same scenario. We're looking for the same combination of marbles, but this is without replacement. I abbreviate that so that it'll take up the same amount of space and I'll be able to fit it in here. This is without replacement. So the first time, again, We've got a two out of four chance of getting black, but we take this, let's say we draw this one, we take it out and we put it here. It does not go back inside the urn. So for our second turn, what are the odds of us getting a black one? One out of three, right? Because we took the marble out and we left it on the table. I better give it a table. Um, I left it on the table here that means there aren't two blacks in here and there aren't four marbles total, right? So I adjust and this becomes two out of 12, which equals one out of six. Yes, that's correct. Both of these are right. And we just have one more problem. Um, do you feel like reading yet? I don't know, I wouldn't mind taking my book out and reading for a while, but I think I left my glasses, my sunglasses up in the room and it's way too bright, even with the umbrellas up. So I don't know, I think I'm just gonna order some fish tacos and read later. Example 83.5. Two cards are drawn from a 52 card deck without replacement. What is the probability that the first one is red and the second one is black. Okay, quick review on cards. There are 52 cards in a deck. There are four suits, right? And they are hearts and diamonds and clovers, clubs, sorry, and spades, which is an upside down heart with a stem. 
Okay, those are the four suits. There's 13 cards of each suit. This is just, I don't know how much experience you have with cards. So 52 divided by the four suits is 13 cards in each suit. Now, there's two colors, right? Hearts and diamonds are red, clubs and spades are black. So that means there are 26 cards of each color. Okay, that's a quickie review on how cards work. Um, all right, so we're supposed to find what is the probability of drawing a red card and then a black card without replacement. Okay, I'll do the work down here. So the probability of drawing a red, there's 26 cards of each color, so that means 26 out of 52 is how many I would get. That's the probability of drawing a red. So we assume that I get a red and we lay it down on the table and now we wanna know if I, what the probability is of drawing a black. Now, there's still 26 black cards in there, right? Because I didn't take out a black card, I took out a red card. We assume that our first incident went the way we wanted it to. We don't assume, oh look, I got a, a black card first. No, we, we're trying to draw a red card first. So that's what we did. 26 red cards out of 52 and all. Now, oh, I wrote this wrong. Now we go to draw a black card. There's still 26 black cards because I haven't touched any of those, right? But there are not 51 cards. Or the <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm giving away the answers. There are not 52 cards anymore because the red card we drew the first time is lying on the table. So now there are 51 cards. So 26 red, take one out and lie it down. There's 26 black. But now there are only 25 red plus the 26 black that we were drawing from. Back here, there were 26 red and 26 black, right? But at this point, there's only 25 red because we drew one of them there. So now we have to multiply those together. Lord have mercy, that's a big number. Except it reduces, look, because 26 goes into 52 and it reduces down to one over two, right? Then two and 26, this is 13 and this is one. And so our final answer is 13 over 51. That's the probability of drawing first a red card and then a black card without replacing the red card. Yay! Well, I don't know how lo much longer our stay in Mexico will continue, but for lesson 30, 83, it has, that lesson has graciously come to an end. And as we enjoy the sunset over the lovely Pacific Ocean, I say goodbye. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.